Hello everybody, my name is Vinay Gupta and I'm a Software Development Director of EPM Cloud. In this video, I'm going to talk about EPM Cloud Operations Guide, which is a one-stop shop for your issues that you may have encountered in EPM Cloud, requests that you want to post to Oracle, or the questions that you may have for EPM Cloud. What are the objectives of EPM Cloud Operations Guide? The reason we created this guide is to fit into Oracle's shift left strategy. The idea is that when you create a service request, it takes time for support to work on it. It may go to development, which can take even more time. So how good it would be if you can resolve the issue yourself or if you can't resolve, you have all the information that you need to provide to us so that we can resolve the issue for you efficiently. And that is exactly the point of the operations guide. If you have an issue, it helps you self-diagnose them and provide all the information to Oracle if you cannot resolve the issue yourself. If you have any request for Oracle, it provides all the information that we need so that you can provide all of that in one go and you do not have to go back and forth we asking more information from you if you have any question it provides you the resources that are available to get the answers to a question so that it can get to the right place in addition the operations guide also explains our whole change management process related to patching and all that this is the location of epm cloud operations guide you can also simply use Google search and put their EPM Cloud Operations Guide and to take you directly there. What is the content of the EPM Cloud Operations Guide? It starts with understanding the general troubleshooting process of EPM Cloud. It answers various different questions related to the EPM Cloud monitoring and troubleshooting. For example, one of the major questions you would have is how to create the backup snapshot. It answers that question. Then it gives more details of how you can review the activity report to identify the performance bottlenecks. For example, what are the UI actions that have performed the worst? What are the business rules that are taking the longest time? What are the S-based queries that have taken the longest time? And what are the different blocks in those business uh, rules etc what are the forms that have taken the longest time that would help you find out what are the performance bottlenecks so that you can resolve them if you cannot resolve the issue it gives you the general understanding of how you can report the issue to to oracle it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get fiddler trace if needed or if you cannot install Fiddler in your environment, you can use network performance traces from browsers. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that for every browser that we support. It provides you information on how you can use provide feedback, which helps Oracle getting the logs that are needed to analyze your issue. And it also gives you instructions on how to put all this information in the service request. In addition, it also answers some other questions, for example, understanding the access limits, whether you can access the underlying operating system or database. Can you access the system and app logs? It provides, in addition to activity reports, other ways you can monitor your system. For example, you can go to My Services portal and can get outage notifications. You can get size of data to see if your size is increasing. You can get various different audit reports. It also provides a way you can run the performance testing on the environment using EPM Automate Replay Command. It also answers questions related to your user accounts. For example, if you have SSO configured, it provides information about client compatibility, whether your client is a browser or a smart view, and also some other best practices for production environments. After that is covered, it goes into three different sections related to issues, requests, and questions. When it comes to issues, the first part is 
troubleshooting EPM crowd issues. And there we have divided this chapter into multiple different sections. As you can see here, this is a huge list. For each of these issues, first we talk about how you can resolve it yourself if there are some best practices that you can use so that those issues don't occur. And then if those issues cannot be resolved by you, what are the specific pieces of information that we need to resolve those issues? For example, if you have an issue with business rule, we would obviously need the business rule name. If it is an issue with a form, we will need obviously the path to the form. We would obviously need what is your expected response time versus what you're getting. In some cases, we may require Fiddler trace or network browser trace. In some cases, we may require which users are getting the issue and so on and so forth. So for all of these, we actually provide you specific pieces of information that we need. And the advantage of that is that when you create the service request, if you put all those information already there, then we don't have to go back to you asking for those and thus it would save time. And when we get the issue, we can already start analyzing it because we have all the information we need to analyze those issues. These issues start with login issues. You cannot log into the environment or the environment is down. Then it goes into specific artifact related issues like business rules, errors or performance, forms, functional performance issues, database refresh issues, smart push issues, ASO data retrieval, large data export from ASO cubes, then goes into import and export, EPM automate, REST API, user role and group management issues, financial reporting reports, errors and performance issues, smart view issues. Then it goes into financial consolidation failure and performance issues, data load issues, content upgrade issues, cross environment connection issues, ERP integration functional issues, IP allow list functional issues. And then if it doesn't belong to any of those categories, then we have other functional performance issues where we provide general information that you need to provide for those issues. In some cases, there could be data inaccuracy in financial consolidation. It provides what information we need to solve those. If there's a data loss, and then if you have an issue with the order processing itself. This mostly covers almost all types of issues that we have seen in past coming from the customers. That's why we have added all these issues specifically. And then again, if it doesn't fall into any of those categories, then we have other categories. And we obviously keep increasing this list over time. So you'll see over time, we we'll add other categories as we find that they are useful and we find that some categories are missing here. The next chapter in EPM Cloud Operations Guide is making EPM Cloud related requests. There are multiple types of requests that you make to Oracle. And this chapter talks about what are the specific information that you need to provide to us so that we can satisfy those requests in a timely manner. Again, the list includes requesting a temporary loaner environment that you might need, for example, to create a POC, how to enroll in the implementation success program, requesting performance validation as part of implementation success program or outside of it. Similarly, requesting automated regression testing that we provide, again, as part of implementation success program or outside of it. Sometimes you want to have a design comparison done for your on-premises planning application that is migrated to EPM Cloud. We have that request that we can satisfy. How to submit an enhancement request. Sometimes you want to increase the financial consolidation closed dimension governor limits and similarly in profitability and cost management governor limits. Sometimes the issue is resolved, but you want us to perform a root cause analysis or RCA for it. This section describes how to do that. Sometimes you want to have an old backup snapshot of an environment because for some reason your, your daily archives have failed. Sometimes you want us to increase the capacity of your system. Also, how to request a health check for an environment where we will provide how your, your environment is behaving. 
Sometimes you want to get the Ethereum Cloud Roadmap information. Sometimes we send you an email that says customer diagnostic alert. Those are the alerts that we have found from our internal, extremely exhaustive diagnostic subsystem. So when we find the issues on your environment that are continuously being monitored and alerted, we take automatic actions on those. But in some cases, the actions have to come from you. So we send these customer diagnostic alert emails to the service administrators, asking them to create an SR with that information so that we can then start having conversation with you and can tell you how you can solve that issue. So this section explains what is the process when you get those emails. And then if you have any other request again that does not fall into any of these categories, then how to request those. Again, this chapter is also keep getting uh, added uh, more requests over time. The next content in EPM Cloud Operations Guide is how to, you can ask questions about EPM Cloud. There are two chapters there. One is asking how to questions and asking other questions. First is basically, if you want to know how to do something, how to ask that question, asking other questions. Again, uh, we provide what are the best ways to ask those questions. And sometimes for these, as well as an enhancement request, we actually suggest that you use Customer Connect for it, as opposed to using the SR system. But again, all that information is available in the operations guide. The last part of EPM Cloud Operations Guide, which is very important, is the EPM Cloud Release Change Management Process. These are the processes that we use to make sure that your environments are up to date and also for you to be able to make some requests that are related to one off patch, etc. So, first section of this chapter is the understanding Oracle's change management process. That's where we explain to you what is a monthly update, what is a weekly patch, what is a one off patch, and what's an emergency patch, which are basically four mechanisms through which we update your environments. Then we explain how we resolve the regression bugs that we have found in test environments. And in some very rare cases, if the regression bugs have made to the production environments, how do we resolve those? We explain our whole change migration procedure, and then we provide different sections on how you can request various different things that you want to do in the release change management process. For example, you might want to delay your production environment update because you might be going through your close cycle. You might want to request a one-off patch because we told you that one particular issue is fixed in a one-off patch. You Sometimes you want to roll back of production environments because the production environment has some regression that may have sneaked there and you want to go back to the previous environment. And then when that issue is fixed, even though we automatically fix it, you may also want to do much back of environment because this maybe because of your upgrade delay, right? So if you have done an upgrade delay, you would say that, oh, now we want to go back to the main code line. Similarly, in some cases, you might want to have the monthly update applied to your production environment prior to the third Friday. That is if we have in a monthly update some specific feature that you really want, and you don't want to wait until the third Friday, you have already tested in your test environment, and you say, okay, instead of third Friday, for example, applied on second Friday itself. So that's that request. And then also the last part of this chapter is how Oracle communicates the update schedule. So we send an email prior to the first Friday, around a week ago, and explain when the patches would be applied and also provide you the what's new documentation link. So this section explains that procedure. Not only that we have added EPM Cloud Operations Guide in docs.oracle.com, but we have put it right at your fingertips when you do provide feedback. You may have noticed this already, that in the last few releases, when you click on provide feedback, it first gives you this UI. It basically has three links, like we talked about, how to troubleshoot EPM Cloud issues, how to make EPM Cloud requests, and how to ask questions about EPM Cloud. Those three links take you to the corresponding 
chapters related to issues, requests, and questions in EPM Cloud Operations Guide. The idea here is again that before you provide feedback, you can go to these sections in the EPM Cloud Operations Guide and see if you can resolve the issues yourself and avoid even creating the service request. But of course, if the issue is not resolved, then you can click on this link or click here and continue the provide feedback process. But now you will know what is specific information we need for the issue that you have because you have gone through the EPM Cloud Operations Guide. So, so there is no issue of getting not the required information to us. This is an example. So let's say you have some business rule performance issue. You can go to that particular section on troubleshooting business rules, errors and performance. And there we start with the best practices that you should follow in designing the business rules. Then we give an example of how to optimize the business rules. First step is reviewing that activity report to, to identify the candidates for optimization. And then we give you step-by-step -step instructions of how you can go in the calculation manager and identify the areas for rule optimization. We also give you some examples of how to do that and some other related information like avoiding the attempt to cross a null member in function error. And then again, if you cannot resolve the, the business rule error or performance yourself, then in the getting help section provides specifically what kind of information we need to resolve that issue. I gave you a location earlier on EPM Cloud Operations Guide. And as I mentioned, you can also go to it from the provide feedback itself. But in addition to that, if you are trying to just find some information related to an issue you have, you can just go directly in Google and say EPM Cloud Operations Guide and put whatever issue you have. So I have given here three examples. One is says business rule performance. Other one is for login issue. And other one is for consolidation performance issue. As it's, and as you can see, it takes you directly to those links where you can find exactly the EPM Cloud Operations Guide content for that particular type of issue. And same thing would happen for requests also. I hope this helped you in finding the operations guide content and how it can help you resolve the issues and give us information that we need to resolve your issues or satisfy your requests or to answer your questions. Thank you.